Well, obviously, who knows who Jagaresh is? Who's who's who's? And if you don't know that, who's 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 seen MedicareFAQ.com? You ever seen that when you're Googling stuff? Because right now, I'd say you guys are about top on uh, search engine op optimization. We're, we're getting up there. It's been a, many years of hard work, millions of dollars to get there, but we're, we're up there. We're yeah. competing with the big boys now. Yeah, oh, you're, oh Danielle, you're comp competing with her. So. <laughs> She's not here, the so big, the big, the big I, I, I can say a little <laughs> bit more now. Dude, she, uh, she was great, but you're, you started off on the AdWords side, on the paid traffic SEM. side. SEM, yep. Uh, but before that, you go all the way back to working at originally AmeriLife. And how old were you when you started? 20. 20 years old, AmeriLife, got on the marketing side. And what happened that made you think, I want to go build what I built? Because you didn't go out really and do it the way a lot of agents did. You went kind of straight in to build what you guys have built. I know it's changed and evolved, but yeah. that concept from the get-go, what did... 20 at AmeriLife do to make you want to flip the switch? I mean, the honest story is uh, I was talking to agents all the time, you know, recruiting them, trying to get that override, you know, doing all that fun stuff. And uh, it seemed like every time I was talking to agents, they were out golfing. I mean, I, they were working, they were working four days, maybe, maybe working four days a week, golfing the other three days a week. And uh, I was like, Hey, I want to be that guy. Right. Just like Coach Burr was saying, you know, do you want to be that one percent or do you want to be, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a year, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year is great. But uh, I saw what these other guys were doing. I saw the freedom that they had. And that's how it started. Yeah. And I think it probably starts that way for a lot of people seeing something and wanting it. So but when you when you took that jump, I think when we talked about it, you first started dabbling in AdWords. And this was what year would that have been like? 20, 20, 2009, 2009, 2009, 2010. Yeah. And so you were, you started down on AdWords to give leads to agents that you worked with. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, you got to remember, this is pre the, the e-health of the world. This is pre telesales. You know, everybody thought I was crazy for thinking that I wanted to sell in, in Medicare insurance over the phone. You know, of course, insurance, select quote, and the uh, some of those groups were already doing final expense and term and, and all that stuff. But Medicare, there was only a couple guys uh, that were doing it at that time. Uh, and I was like, all right, well, if I can generate leads, I think I can sell a policy. Um, and I was, it, it's a typical garage story. So I created the ugliest website. And Matt, I'm not a design guy. I'm not a dev guy. It was called supplements to Medicare.com. Um, and I created it on GoDaddy and figured out AdWords. Uh, that's, that's what I did after I left AmeriLife every single day. Uh, I figured out AdWords and gen started generating leads. What I, was, what I was able to do is start giving leads um, over to uh, some agents in South Florida. And when they called me after about a week and they said, hey, give me as many as you can give me, I realized we had something at that point. And about six months later, I decided to leave AmeriLife and Fast forward uh, to today, uh, you know, I've been doing this uh, now, like I said, for, for 13 years, um, 33 years old, uh, and it, it's the most amazing industry, too, on top of that. Yeah. Well, in the, the scale in which you've done it, we, we went to skip around a little bit. A couple of years ago, we went when Jagger had just gotten to the offices in now, which they're having to, I think, move somewhere else to more yeah. space. Similar Looking to what Daniel double. was talking about, you grow really fast. Yep. We go to this office, and I told a lot of people, I'm like, they got like the Google of Medicare <laughs> centers in there. I mean, it was uh, decked out with gamification, meaning like interactive scoreboards and data keeping, where it was like tracking the uh, the ancillary placement per yeah. agent, tracking Tax which rate. companies you're writing the most, all these different things, and then you know, in real time, keeping up with it, and it was just really cool. But you didn't. That wasn't the beginning, you know, when you guys first started and you started bringing on agents and saying, I'm going to use these leads and I'm developing for my own team. Yep. Uh, what what was that transition from, okay, the leads are good to... To, this? to uh, so I, I've done everything. I got got on the phone right away. You know, you got you to start at the beginning. So it was me, uh, my, my business partner now, David Haas, he's our COO. Um, and we had one other agent um, that were... 
on the phone selling and just gradual growth. You know, we just gradually uh, added that admin, right? You know, I know uh, Josh had said something about that. You know, we added that admin and then all of a sudden we hired one marketing person to, to, to help out. And then there was another agent um, and gradual growth over the years, you know, fast forward seven, seven years later, you know, we started off in a 1200 square foot office and we're now in an 18,000 square foot office. And I'm looking for over 40,000 square feet with the capacity of growing up to 80,000 square feet right now. How many, I, I, because I've heard about, you know, Beish and Danielle's team kind of genetic makeup, we both talked about both of those, but with yours, how many team members are in the 18,000 square feet right now? We were, almost, we're approaching 100 right now. Okay. And your service to, I know you have marketing team, service yep. team, you know, couple of C-suites, sales managers, and then sales people. For, about 40% sales, the other is operations, IT, marketing, okay. and, uh, and retention. How many, how many are in retention, you think, for that 40 on sales? Um, and again, we're, we're a med sub shop, guys. So we all know Medicare supplement services a little less on that side of it. Uh, we call them not only our, our retention team, right, our customer care team, but I mean, they're, they're calling whenever an agent doesn't sell that ancillary policy, they're out there cross-selling. Right. That's that's what they're there to do, too. Um, but we've got now, I think, in the customer care team, we've got seven or eight, seven or eight. Seven or eight. Yeah. It's a big deal. You know, retention's huge. I mean, it's something you've talked about quite a bit I, uh, with Bobby, Danielle, you know, a lot. Uh, it's come up probably 20 or 30 times on this conference um, and retention and, and that stickiness, you know, is, is something yeah. that we really focus in and the carriers love it. And the the. The branding, I think, that goes behind keeping quality service out there, especially for you guys, because I mean, you have a as far as a just digital brand. You know, a lot of people think a brand is a person, but really, before that, a brand was a brand, and now it's kind of we're in that era of a brand as a person. We've had that conversation about yeah. how you're like, I've never really been out there. I've been building the brand from behind. We've had you've hired people to do like the video and stuff yep. like that, and you, you know, um, and then of course, search is just different. But then as we're scaling and writing articles and things, and maybe you're like, okay, we need to get out there a little bit more. And I might have to get out there and do some of that crap I don't want to do. Yeah. You never really want to be in the spotlight. You want to be the the uh, the Wizard of Oz. I am. I'm, I'm definitely more of the, the guy that gets behind the closed door. I do have an open door policy. I have a really good team. I... Uh, I'm really close with everybody, but I'm not that camera guy. So for me to sit up here, luckily these lights, I can't see everybody, you know, so it's not. And just so you guys bad. know, these lights are bright. Like, They're bright. You guys look like all silhouettes. I can see like just the guys right here. But um, yeah, and so it's different. But Jagger's always been that way. We talked, you know, Beish was would, would go and do Facebook ads. Yeah. And then I started, I was doing I'm like, something. who can I hire? Who's going to be good at this? Yeah, you were like going out finding that person. Yeah. You've got some good people on there on, on, on videos. You have like somebody that you blast everywhere. But. I know a lot of people as you've grown are like, hey, we want to interview you. We want to do that. Yeah. How many of those do you turn down or have you in the past? Listen, Justin, I mean, you've pursued me for years and I've I've ghosted him probably four or five times on, <laughs> on podcasts. Not meaning to. Um, I finally got you on the other day. Yeah, got me on the other day, I which, think your, which was good. Your your oldest was at the window like because you were at the house. Oh, yeah. Like, trying to yeah, I had to go outside. I mean, yeah. they, <laughs> my daughter at the time was two weeks old. He's 17 months old so he's running around beating yeah. himself so i had to go sit outside but yeah i mean uh, of course uh, westfall and other people that have been doing podcasts over the years have have always bugged me but you've you've become a, a good friend uh, of mine uh, uh and you know i i love what you're doing i mean this this is I, i've learned a lot myself guys and this is this is awesome yeah awesome man well so we we talking a lot about and some this has come up a couple of times since we've been here with people about you know the call centers when I was talking to Danielle I was talking about the term call center you know yeah I started learning about call centers I was thinking I thought about boomer benefits you know Medicare FAQ or elite I thought about uh, spring venture group maybe. yep and so all my experience with call centers is I was respected them because they were building like these quality businesses and then in the past few years, it seems like, and I'm not trying to knock any of those, those businesses, <laughs> but the lead strategy that was coming out of some of these and the acquisition model, you know, which I told Danielle when we were at CapitalCon, I was going to call the double A call center so I could it's acquire and abandon, <laughs> which now I am knocking them, I guess. We'll name their names, but we've been talking about those a lot. And 
I think it's important to you as somebody who's spent a lot of money and a lot of time cultivating quality leads of people who want your service, you know, and creating a, a kind of, a, I guess, a wave in the industry of doing the right thing at scale. You can go to scale with quality. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes it becomes this argument of the individual brokers thinks they can only do the quality because they're comparing it to the call center that's doing the terrible job. But these in-between groups are doing things differently. And I, kudos to you for that because, and, and honestly, the call centers that we've had up here, they all deserve a round of applause because at scale, they're taking care of people and should be looked at differently than some of these other and they are you know i mean we're hearing it more and more from the carriers the carriers are starting to understand their numbers i mean it's cheap changing from a the lead aggregator standpoint and stuff like that but um it, it's it's mind-blowing that you know of course we we've got a lot of people in our backyard right in the the tampa bay area um and we get some of those agents that come over and they just don't they don't know what they don't know and you can't blame the agent um, about not selling Medicare supplements, you know, and, and things like that, you know, it's, it's really these larger organizations that aren't giving the training that aren't doing that type of stuff, you know, and if you're not doing that, you're not doing right by the consumer, right? It, it's pretty simple. And that this is the way that I've built the company over the years is do what's in the best interest for the consumer, right? It's, it's simple. If you've got a, if you got a med sub client, you got a med sub client. If it's an MA client, it's an MA client and these larger orgs just aren't doing they're not, I, I can't believe, you know, the, some of the, and I'm not going to name names, but some of these groups, uh, when, when you talk to the agents though, they're like, they don't even know what a Medicare supplement plan F is. Yeah. How the hell are you an insurance agent in the Medicare space? And you don't know what a, uh, a Medicare supplement plan F is. That's just mind blowing to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's one thing when your, your marketing puts you in front of maybe more dual eligibles or low income subsidy, you're at some, some field agents that send things. That's what they're going to run across most of the time. But I'd say, you know, 99% of the people here are going to know if they run into a plan F, like, okay, I know what, how that works. Right. Even if they're, even if they're focused on that market. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've told you, like, we've, we've filled in a lot of those calls. Somebody, probably somebody here, put my number in some lead algorithm thing. You know, I used to put my number in some. I put it in yours several times before. <laughs> Hot David called me, I think, one time or something, sort of screwing with me. But we, um, you know, we've, we've talked to those agents and I've told them, you know, I've, I've played the part. I have a mutual of Omaha Plan F. And, you know, they're saying, okay, you, you need to get the dent, these extra benefits, dental vision hearing, start you know, going to their pitch. And I was like, can you not just shop my Plan F rate and see I'm pretty healthy? Yeah. Let's, What's let's Plan like F? teed up, you know, <laughs> quality. And then she said, well, what, what is a plan F? That's what the agent asked me. It's sad, to, it's sad that I'm laughing about it, but yeah. it, it's pretty crazy. But, you know, and it's not, that's, it, just like you said, there's there's a place for Medicare Advantage, there's a place for MedSup. Um, it's not about one's greater than the other. That argument gets thrown out there. Eugene likes to throw it in Medicare Gurus, by the way, just to game the algorithm, because he gets 340 comments on a post in there. And then all of a sudden he's like, well, great, go check out Train Virtual. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, but it's not one or the other. We're at, a, we're at a point now where there's plenty of quality Medicare Advantage plans. There's plenty of areas where they're very viable. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we're also at a point where, um, you know, MedSup remains strong. And sometimes that conversation gets, and this is a great thing to go down, great, great road to go down. Medicare advantage pushing recruiting organizations, I think try to create a narrative that MedSup is shrinking because Medicare Advantage enrollment is increasing. Yep. And it's not true. No. MedSup en enrollment is actually going up as well. It's just that more, A, people are aging in at a, a crazy rate, mm -hmm. faster than ever, and B, I think the dual eligible market and plan availability of MA expanding has got more of the people that were on original Medicare before. It's really not growing at the expense of med sub, I don't know. No, I mean, and, and you really got to think about it, right? If you if you went back when I, uh, when we started Elite Insurance Partners, what, you were getting maybe five to 10% of enrollments coming from call centers at that time. Now, fast forward to 22, this year it'll be north of 60% that are coming from call centers, right? That's what's dictating the market, right? Their plans are getting better, right? Of course, you know, with the PFFSs and stuff like that, that 
Um, you know, I've gone away. Now you got your traditional HMO, PPO type plans. You know, it's becoming more consistent um, across the board, which that does help. But, you know, I, it, it's funny because I, I'm, I'm really close with some of the, the, the larger groups that are out there. Um, and, you know, I have those conversations and I asked them, I was like, why do you think we're seeing such a, an increase in Medicare Advantage enrollments? Whereas Met's up, it's kind of flatline, you know, Medicare Advantage is, is, is up and, oh, it's because, uh, you know, cost of living's going up and it's not going as high as social security. It's not increasing as much, you know, as social security with it. And they're like, oh, that's the reason why. And I was like, no, it's because your call center is not trained on Medicare supplements. Right. Yeah. You're just pushing them to that zero premium plan. Right. And that's that's what that's what's happening in the it's market. It's amazing that they would. And if you think that. otherwise, come have a conversation with me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. On that. I, it's amazing that they think that's the answer when they know good and damn well they're not training them to sell meds. So, yeah, I had a I had a talk, I was talking to someone the other day that was being sent down the path of having their call center write uh, live transfer overseas. And they had been in that process battling alarmingly bad statistics. Mm -hmm. I, I heard the lowest number I'd ever heard was 29%. And they had uh, battled it with uh, service and gotten it up to like 47% based on this. And the person that ran the shop that was developing the, the transfers told her that, uh, well, the average meds up in the country only stays on the book two years and then they're going to MA. And she asked me if that was true. And I'm like, that's not true at all. Maybe from his lead source because mm -hmm. he's, you know, scraping the bottom of the lead source barrel. Right. But it is not, that's not industry average. And you told me something one time because you guys are getting a, you know, a tremendous amount of, you know, traffic of people actually searching for the information they're looking for. You guys started ranking for, and, and there's a reason, reason to say this and why you'd have to understand why someone would turn down um, a, a ready and willing lead of any kind. But on your site, you had, a, an article for Part B Give Back Rank, and you removed the call to action. The call to action from it because you were getting a bunch of leads that you really didn't want coming yep. through, and yep. then the people that you sell your overflow to probably didn't want either. <laughs> no, no, I mean because it, we we sell a Met Sup lead, right? We don't sell an MA lead, um, and so when it's converting at one and a half percent, and my other my other URLs and other campaigns are converting at 12, 14 percent. I'm just wasting the agent's time at that point. So, yeah, we've had quite a few of those flex card, yeah. which is great though, because I mean we had over two and a half million, uh, two and a half million people come to our website last year. This year, we're tracking almost double that um, to have over five million, five million people come to our website five this year. Million people, and how many? So five, so two and a half million people hit. Do you know how many MedSup MA total you wrote last year? Last year. We were at, it was about 12 million, 12 million in premium. This year we'll do uh, just north of probably close to 20. Yeah, 20 million so, and on the two, like on a two and a half million year, that many, that much coming through, what, what's it, you know what your approximate ad, ads words budget was on it? Because I know a lot of it's organic now, but yeah. I'm just curious, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, we spent, it was, right around six million last year um on on google and bing uh, facebook i mean you've said it quite a few times here you know we've kind of backed out on facebook we do some retargeting and and stuff like that on facebook that's pretty much all it's good for for us at least um we probably spent maybe three quarters of a million with facebook last year yeah just a little bit you know just, just <laughs> a little bit of retargeting only about seven hundred fifty thousand on facebook no big deal um <laughs> So, no, but that's, yeah, there, so we're seeing some stuff work on Facebook. So I know, like, some of you are like, I got something working on Facebook. Uh, and it's true. There are little, you know, there are niches where people are finding success. But, uh, you know, when you, one thing I've seen Jagger do is go, a, you know, a mile or 10 miles deep into one strategy for acquiring clients. And it, that's why you're at the top of the private side of, SEO for Medicare, um, which seems like a hyper niche thing, but it's like one of the most competitive things I would bet to be ranked for. It was the first person that I hired in my marketing team. So we've got a team of, I think, 15, 15 people in the marketing team right now. Um, first person that I hired was a SEO specialist. Mm -hmm. And and that was, uh, that was in 2017. 
team. And we, we are finally now starting to reap the reward of it. Uh, I was able, and I, I think I've told this to you, um, of course, Bobby knows it and, and quite a few other people. We were able to turn off advertising, all of AEP. We had enough leads that were coming through to feed all of our agents, all of AEP. I had a negative CPA, all of, a, all of AEP last year. Wow. Negative CPA. Because you had that organic spike. I mean, because yours. Yeah. I mean, you y'all were doing well, but you July we saw a big, big increase. Because yeah. I, I keep up with it like a nerd. Like I'm, you know. As he much sent as me I a can. screen to, a shot the other day. He's like, I'm coming for you. Yeah, we're we, we're trying. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things for us now. Where we just we have to invest in it. But like, thing is, like, you don't have to be number one to get no, the lead flow. Absolutely I mean, not. You, you can be number ten in that you know, space and still be clicking up. And, and, and for anybody that's looking to do SEO and, you know, whether you're a, a call center like us, you know, a larger shop or um, you're just doing regional stuff, right? You can rank for terms in your own little area, you know, and get really good quality. And those, those convert the best. So my SEO leads convert much better uh, and then even my uh, Google and Bing leads, my Google and Bing leads that I'm paying fifty, sixty dollars for, right, um, are are performing much better. Yeah. What's do you know what the highest lead call CPA you ever hit was, or, or uh, not calls per lead, but to acquire a client? What I'm sure you've had some times where it got up there because it's all like a roller. Yeah. Coaster, you know? Yeah. I mean, we we look we we look at that on a daily basis, depending on uh, me. I mean, we've we've got some of them that are at a $2,000 CPA. Oh yeah. So you know? you're, you, you guys track it like hyper targeted back down to back to the URL, the URL. The exact, the exact source that yeah. it came from. So yeah, we have some that are, that are $2,000. Well, we're not getting from a That's LTV. You take the, uh, the lead, the call to action off of yes. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we're like, okay, we're not doing that one anymore. Yeah. We're sending them straight to D to C at that point. Yeah. Which it, it, that's that's worked for us as well. We do a little bit of D to C, uh, trying to get the consumer directly uh, to to do an application on their their own, but it's it's less than a one percent conversion rate. So how how rapidly do you guys? Oh, and this is so a lot of these call centers, man, that that pick up a ton of agents pre AP, and you know, I've heard some of them. We've actually get because we're a little bit in the brokerage side now. We get getting reached out to by call center agents that have been cut from these yep. giant call centers and I mean maybe you guys pick some of those up when you need them but you guys hire I guess at a rate that's more sustainable you guys aren't coming in after AP and chopping down staff and stuff like no. that. No we're not I mean that's the great thing about being a med sub shop right um, do we have an abundance of uh, of leads during AEP yes absolutely um, so instead of calling that lead 11 times uh, outside of AEP right we only can call them like 2.2 times um, during AEP. Um, and we've got agents that are writing uh, over 100 med subs uh, in a month, right? You know, during AEP just because they're hanging up and it's that it's that next one. Uh, but no, we, we, we don't let anybody go uh, Q1. We've been very fortunate to, to not have to do that. So when we were in your office, you guys, you guys actively tracked in real time your agent's attachment rate. Mm -hmm. And you had one that was up there at like, and I didn't, I never thought about it at the time. I just remember it was over a hundred percent, 120% attachment rate, yep. you know, ancillary to MedSA. And, uh, you know, and so I was like, this guy, even when he can't write a MedSA is writing the pediatric <laughs> cancer policy. And it started changing the way we thought about, you know, it's not a, it's not a cross sell. Sometimes it's a save, saving yourself from a, you know, wasting a whole bunch of time. You yeah. can't, Right, that, but doesn't mean you can't sell something. Sometimes we cross sell cancer with the savings on a Medigap rewrite. It's one of mm -hmm. the easiest things to do because you just created additional revenue. You tapped a little bit back into an additional benefit. Yeah, I'm still saving money. Now they got better coverage. And that's awesome. But like, how important is that attachment rate? I mean, you guys tracking it there, I'm assuming that it helps you value how much some an agent's bringing to the table and. And, you know, you guys probably track that all the way back to the lead source and everything. Everything. Yeah, we bring it back. I mean, you got you got to figure. So for for us, right, um, CPAs are increasing, you know, significantly. So you've got to try to get as much out of every consumer as possible, you know, every single time. Uh, you know, Galen. Uh, Galen was, uh, I know, for, for Bobby, uh, Danielle. I mean, I know she's done a lot of uh, training with them as well. 
Um, we were at a, when I was selling, right, a handful of years ago, we weren't selling any DVH. We weren't selling any HI. We weren't selling any Chaz. Um, and Galen's like, you guys are stupid. They're like, why are you guys not, you know, selling it? And then, of course, the the queen of the bundle, you know, came out at that point. And, uh, but yeah, our, our attach rate now is roughly 40% majority of his it's dental vision and hearing go figure you know right with uh with it being medicare supplements we're, we're getting better at the chas uh and then hi is kind of non-existent at that point yeah. you know, we do a little bit but not much you guys are probably one of the larger distributors of a couple of dv shorten out of uh you guys are uh, i think and you like the pop-up at the top of all these leaderboards with like Aetna and stuff and yep. david was telling me he's like uh, we told him to take our names off of there. <laughs> Getting- brings brings a little bit of attention, and and it's we we are very diversified now. You know, yeah. too. You know, there's a lot of good dental plans that are out there, but it seems like as soon as somebody somebody's hot for a year, that next carrier you know tries yeah. to come in and and do it, which we love, right? We we are we're always pushing the carrier to get the best products for the consumer uh, for the consumers. Uh, the better that they can do with that, of course, commissions and everything else. Uh, you know, helps us all. So all the med, all the med subs, you know, you're going, you know, pretty much nationwide, right? Like there's so many med subs that come in at a time. Do you guys narrow it down and like, you don't just write brands cause that's the thing, you know, early on, I think you would go for the heavy brands, but now you strategically pick up some, you know, as we were talking over here, like you guys would pick up capital and you're writing a lot of mm-hmm. capital now. Um, what do you look for when you're picking that? I mean, obviously, EAP, you know, all these years, but it's it's so hyper competitive, just like DVH, it's continuously evolving. It, I mean, is it? I mean, this is geo and all kinds of stuff, but you 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 still limit it to a very few amount of med subs. Like if I go into CSG right now, my team might see fifty in there, and I've started trying to remove them yeah. because it's it's convoluted. Um, is there anything out of the ordinary you guys look for and? Our, I guess our biggest thing is that we, we are, we stick to the main, you know, the, the big five, you know, for the most part, um, we don't pick up a lot of the smaller ones because just like the carriers are, are looking at us from a persistency standpoint, I'm looking at the carrier as well. Like if there's sometimes, and there's some, you know, there's some, uh, TPA companies that are out there when you're having a 12, 15% increase, but they're like, Oh, well, Hey, your, your persistency sucks. Well, it's because you guys have shitty rate increases, right? So we, we look at a lot of that. Um, it's not always about the the commission. Um, of course, it helps. You know, there are a couple carriers out there that have lower lower commissions, yeah. uh, longer trail years. But you know, something that we we do and and we haven't done it for probably like eighteen months. Something we need to refresh is we do look at LTVs. We look at LTVs by carrier, by state, by plan, right? And that helps us dictate from a persistency standpoint and everything else of, you know, who's going to get more bit more of our business because most of the carriers are what, between three to $5, yeah. you know, for the most part. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying don't write some of those regional plans or some people that chase the extra, you know, 200, $300 app bonuses and stuff like that. Um, we don't necessarily do that. Uh, we, we don't. You said something interesting to me. You, you track the LTV by state, plan type carrier. carrier yep what's the biggest like what's the spread on that like the top to the bottom difference of you know fit, you know what because i'm it got to be i guess if there's a high ma penetration in the state if the carrier's got bad rate increases mm-hmm. um, plans the biggest thing why do you think uh we were able to get the carriers to increase uh, the, the plan plan in comp. Plan in comp. Yeah. Um, you know, I we had a big dealing with that because we're looking at it and LTVs were two to three hundred dollars less. You know, with plan in versus F or G. Yeah. Um, and they were pushing it. Still. They were pushing it, and I'm <laughs> like, hey guys, we're we're not going to sell this because of the fact that it's so much lower, yeah. right? And then all of a sudden they started doing that. You know, that three most carriers do a three percent bump at least. Um, with plan in, which kind of brought us, yeah. you know, up there. The crazy part though is, is plan in, uh, the, the persistency is a little lower. Um, and I, we, we need updated, updated data, but you know, you, you of course you've got your Missouri's, your California's, your birthday rule States and, and those one offs, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how those different States perform. 
Um, and they actually, some of those states perform very, very well for us. Really? Yeah. Some, yeah. Of the, some of the high penetration states? Well, yep. I guess it's a specific type of client that is coming through, especially with search and your lead strategy. Because like Beish had said yesterday, uh, that your lead strategy is absolutely directly correlated with your persistence. Yeah, absolutely. And you probably have, if you know, if there's 10 levels of quality lead flow, you're up at the eight or nine level. Of it. 10 would be like, you know, hey, my sister used you. I live down the street. Yeah, you yeah. Know, <laughs> that, those are the referrals. <laughs> As far as just a digital lead uh, flow, I would say you guys are way up there. So the person in California that decides they want a med sup probably doesn't need to change for a few bucks here and there. Is that it, it, it's what you do after the fact, though, too. It's yeah. not just, you know, day one, right? Um, and this is where some of these larger centers have gotten in trouble. Uh, if you look at their quarterlies and, and stuff like that is the fact that they sign them up. And then they kind of forget about them, right? And any of the, the what I call the feet on the uh, feet on the street agents are always saying about call centers. It's accurate for most. Is you know once you kind of get signed up, you you never hear from them ever again. Where us, you know, we're touching them three to five times with drip campaigns, mailers, you know, things like that. It's minimal cost to increase that LTV to increase referrals, right? Uh, to increase uh, the spouse attach rates and, and things like that. Yeah. So what is the average LTV you're seeing? Because you guys have been at it long enough where I feel like you have a more dialed in number. In the yeah. beginning, is a little bit of a guess. And like Beige said yesterday, you want to be conservative on the estimate so you don't put yourself in a bad position. What do you, where are you seeing MedSup LTV from a digitally virtually written standard. yeah so we actually just got this valuation done again just and we just had the call like a week ago um it's just north of fifteen hundred dollars okay and, and that's that is a that is a med sub that's not including any kind of ancillary you know you throw a, a dvh on top of that it's roughly 230 bucks um, you know, you throw a Part D for anybody that's not writing Part D. We've got millions of dollars in renewals coming in. And we really don't do anything. Of course, we do their annuals if they want it. Uh, there's only about 10% of the people that actually end up coming back and saying, hey, I want to compare my Part yeah. D plan. You know, I'm happy with it, right? But we have millions of dollars in renewals that are coming in from Part D. So for anybody that's not writing Part D, you're crazy. Yeah, what's funny is when you go into Medicare from the first, like, see, so you come into the industry and you're on life and annuity, right? Or you, you know, some people come straight into to Medicare. If you go to Medicare, you're already buying into the idea that compounding small renewals add up, mm -hmm. and they're like, but Part D is too small. What's what's too small? Like, there is an old like homage of dripping nickels. You know, if you get enough nickels, you can be rich, right? Um, but we have the same way. I've posted some screenshots of like a you know january february march pdp deposits we're mm -hmm. getting and they're 75 80 90 thousand dollar pdp renewal deposits yeah. from multiple carriers in that that time frame i it's, look forward to my my february march every it's like every bonus, single year it's just like bonuses you know um, extra cash and it, it's it makes your business stickier okay the the more policies you have in that house right the stickier they're going to be something that pete said too right is um, you know, for, for life insurance, you know, they're, they're, if you're going to sell them a Medicare policy, you might as well sign up, sell them final expense. Pete, you and I need to talk about that, by the way. Um, but um, it, it becomes more sticky at that point. The, the more policies you have in the house, the longer the, the retention is going to be. They're going to come back to you versus going to somebody else. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. And I think the PDP may be the policy that makes it the stickiest yeah. because it's really part of the puzzle for them. If they're not MA, they're med sub. The PDP is part of the If you don't write that, and, and, and this goes back again to what P said, if you don't write that PDP and they inquire on my website for PDP and you just sold them a med sub, guys, I'm replacing that med sub, okay? And I'm going to write that PDP as well. Yeah. yeah the, the, so you can keep doing it if you want. The quality med sub call centers have gotten, like, so I mean, I've talked to base a lot of you and, and the scripting and the training on how to deal with taking that med sup from another agent is first of all, it's tasteful. It's not like they're you're saying anything disingenuous, but you know it, they know what to say. They know how to pivot position, use all the carrier data, plan data, you know, information to pivot. And some of those agents are really good at saying, well, why do they do this when, you know, and 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 also the first objection, right, or first 
rebuttal to, well, I already have an agent on this med stuff. I just need help with the drug plan. Is oh, why didn't he help you with the drug plan? Yep. I that, mean, that's, that's 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 the first thing that's said. <laughs> like you know, that's we when we do the drug plans because we think that this is a healthcare consultation and. If you need a drug plan, I guess you agree that drugs are part of this mm -hmm. desired scenario. So it gets pretty easy to pull them away. We had a guy, you know, and, and we do we do virtual, but we have the lo the local strong presence. And they there's a guy a couple towns over that had gotten older, I guess, and you know he just started. Uh, he had people coming into the office to buy med steps, and he'd throw them the paper app, and they'd fill it out. He was still writing a lot because he'd been around for I don't know, forty years doing it, and. He started telling them on the drug plans to go to Fred's, and you know Fred's went out of they closed all their pharmacies in the southeast. But when they would go there, the Fred's pharmacist there was sending them to us to get the drug plan. And I swear I don't know how long until he like stopped sending them to Fred's. But we picked up like fifty or sixty of these people yep. over a year that just kept coming in, and we were rewriting his mess up every time. And he wasn't that great at service. Like he's throwing the application they're filling out. Like oh he had you fill out your own application. Well he's been at it a while you know he's a he's you know but we never like talking bad about him but it was really easy when you're not doing that piece of the puzzle so you got to know your numbers you know if you see that type of stuff you've got to figure it out you've got to stop the bleeding if you're bleeding you got to figure out why you're bleeding and then you gotta you gotta react to it um decisiveness and and whether it's you know you being an loa or anything else like that just in life in general you know you gotta you gotta be decisive and uh to, to, to make your business work. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this up for you, but I wanna know for you and David, I'm gonna, you can speak for him too, just curious from knowing you guys. You got 40 guys on the phones, you got a website that's developing, you know, 200 plus organic leads a day, plus, you know, paid, all this other stuff. You got your, your client services team, you got a big marketing team, you got sales managers, what is a, what do you do on a daily basis at this point with an operation like that? What are you doing? People ask me this stuff. and I sleep in my office. I don't do that's what. That's what people probably think. That's <laughs> what everybody thinks. He's, um, he's it, working on a Sunday like Coach Burt said. I it, it, a lot of strategic stuff now. You know, I've been, I've been very fortunate to, to hand a lot of stuff over. I still do a lot on the marketing side. I'm very uh, involved on the marketing side. Um, and then just really now managing my my managers you know and our, our directors and really just being in tune uh with everything that's going on you know i don't want to lose sight of what's happening in customer care now we're able to to dig into the numbers a little bit more and we're able to find more efficiencies right um why are we getting declined you know what are what what can we do from a retention standpoint you know do we do we have to call that person at 23 months and just do an outreach because we're losing a whole bunch of people during that time, right? Now it's just finding efficiencies to, to get the LTVs better, right? To, to go to these carriers and get more out of the carriers as well, or working with the carriers to find, hey, what can we do with you guys to get some more money, right? To get more money, do, do you need this or do you need that, right? Um, so it's a lot more of the, the strategic, um, which I, I, I love selling. I love being, I love being on the phones. I, I loved all that type of stuff, but this is what drives growth. That's why we're right now we're seeing, uh, we'll, we'll probably grow from a policy count, you know, 60 ish percent this year, next year, I expect over a hundred percent, uh, growth. And the only way we're able to do that is, is, is finding those efficiencies to, to help out in other areas and stuff like that. So you're going to grow 175 more agents now, like like Daniel. Hey, the, yeah, I mean the the new office will sit a total uh, total team of 350. Um, the good news is is from a from a marketing and like operation standpoint, we don't we've we've filled a lot of our our main positions now. So our our per our overhead per policy count is going to start going down because I don't need to go up hire another office manager. I don't need to go hire another uh, SEO director, right? Um, now we've got a really solid team. Now we're just going to start hiring agents. Yeah. No, now it's just agents. So we'll see that that 60%, you know, operations, marketing, IT, because um, that's where we are right now, 60-40, right? And we'll start seeing more of it that flop. We'll have 60% agents, 40% operations and such. So I'm trying just... This is for me. 
hopefully this is good for you guys. <laughs> forty LOAs, or for, you know, forty core team agents, right? And you you have that growth. We know the site is going to grow, but I'm assuming some of it's already there. You just want to create the proper infrastructure, and so in the meantime, your you have a couple of lead partners that you sell overflow med sub leads to. What percentage of the total amount of lead flow that you're bringing in right now are you selling in first that? Yeah, that's it, it's about 15%. We always try to keep that 15% buffer. Um, always try to sell about 15% of our leads. Um, we, we, we make sure that our agents are fed first, right? If, if a lead comes in, it hits my center. If we don't have an agent that's available, I'll, I'll go ahead and ping uh, one of our partners at that what point. What are they paying for that lead now? You told me 72 at one time. Is it still around that? Or? It, it's in the 60s. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the 60s. And But you got to remember, we're I'm not getting a $20 lead either. You know, yeah, during business hours, we're... 60s, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The margins have definitely sh shrunk on that side of it uh, just because it is hyper-competitive. Yeah. Uh, but... And so knowing that you could grow that fast, you're like extremely confident that you can just quickly begin to increase the lead flow. You're just kind of toggling it back with that 15% buffer because you have CPAs to are going to increase. So it's, it's now being able to, like I said, reduce your, your overhead. Okay. Per policy. Okay. Yeah. Now you're reducing your overhead per policy, um, which means you can increase your kind of your, your CPAs as well, because you're going to be doing more volume. Yeah. The difference right? in lead call CPA versus total call CPA. Yep. So when you're, you can, Spend more on leads if your total call starts to starts go going down. down. Yeah, and that's where we are now. It's trying to figure out what those exact numbers are. Um, I mean, Bobby, you guys hit it. Hit it really. Are you willing to spend six hundred to make fifteen, not twelve hundred, right? Fifteen hundred. He was you know? willing to conserve. <laughs> it, it's definitely higher than twelve hundred dollars for sure. <laughs> and that's not. I mean, that's not even including the ancillary sales. That's not including. So you're anything. still technically being kind of conservative yeah. with it as well. Yep. Um, you know, well, obviously the compounding effect of attention, SEO and renewals is, like we said, bigger than you really think it is. And if you can spend the money today, you can make a ton as well as build a really, really cool business around it. These guys have an awesome business. Ryan Travers actually asked me, he said, hey, can you ask Jagger if I can come over and see his call center? <laughs> and I said, come to Medicare Con and ask him because I felt weird about asking. I was like, if he meets you, he'll probably let you. And they met last night and he said, yeah, come, come on up. up. But That's... it doesn't mean everybody can. <laughs> I, got, I got one. No, just be, just come with Bobby. Bobby just, yeah, just, just, but he brought Chris brings people over. Yeah. He just showed up with Christian Brindle. I was like, Oh, hi. And he's like hi. live streaming the screens. Of the agents. <laughs> <laughs> no, awesome buddy. Well, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. And, uh,